Hi, George here with another Photoshop Elements for Beginners project. This time around we'll be using Photoshop Elements to add a person into a photograph. Actually here we'll be using Photoshop Elements to add in the person and the owl as well into a new background. Now this may look a little bit difficult, but it's not. This really is a beginner level Photoshop Elements project. Fairly straightforward and fairly easy to do. Just a few little tricks in here to get this to look right. And we'll be using three pictures in here. One picture is the background. One picture is the owl. And I've actually flipped the owl's direction and also given it a slight colorization in here. This was a black and white image of an owl. And then of course, the girl standing up on top. We'll need to remove the girl from her photo and the owl from his photo and then merge those both together in here to the final look and then do some color adjustments and some value adjustments. But again, fairly straightforward, nothing really tricky on this one. Now we'll be downloading all three of these pictures from the internet and I'll show you where in just a second. But if you like this kind of project and you want to keep my channel going and get more of these Photoshop Elements videos, consider hitting that thanks button right down there bottom right hand corner right below the video. I really appreciate that. Okay, first thing we'll do is to close this file down and then let's open up the three photos that we need for the project. Let's close that down. And then we're going over here to Pixabay, which is my favorite website for downloading free images to use in these projects. Our first one here is this photo. This is the background photo. And I'll put this link in the description so you can easily get right to this page. And it's a free download. I'm currently logged in, so these are easy to download quickly. But having an account here on Pixabay is free. There's no cost to it. It just saves you a little bit of time when you're downloading. You don't have to do that CAPTCHA thing each time you download an image. Okay, click on free download. We want the 1920 by 1440 size right here. Download. And I'll be saving these into a folder I have on my hard drive. I just called it projects. Just a place to work with kind of a temporary location. And choose save. Okay, that one is done. Let's close that down. And our next one here, this one grew with watermelon. The watermelon is in her hand. It's kind of hard to see, but there you go. A little slice of watermelon. Same thing. Free download. I'm logged in so there's no CAPTCHA thing to go through. And again, we want to have the one that has the 1920 as one of the sizes. In this case, it's 1280 by 1920 because, of course, it's a tall image. Choose download. Download again to the same location. Okay, that one is done. And then our final image right here is this owl. And as I mentioned before, it is a black and white image. And we'll add some color to this. And then free download. And once again, I want the one that includes that 1920 as one of the dimensions. So they're all about the right size and download right in here, choose save. And there we go, we've now downloaded all three of our images from Pixabay. Okay, let's go back over to Photoshop Elements and bring those images into the program. Here we go, let's go up now to the file menu here and open, or you can just go right here where it says open, click on that, navigate to your working folder, Again, yeah, mine's right here, I'm just gonna select all three of these images, choose open, and that brings them all in. Now if we go down here, bottom left hand corner to the photo bin, you'll see all three images in our photo bin. And this come in for me as a floating window. I'm going to show you where that is. I'm not using it this time around, but I'll show you where that is. Go up here to edit, come down to preferences and general. And that's this checkbox right here, allow floating documents in export mode. That's all that is. Make sure that's checked. You'll then have your floating documents. But right now I'm just going to take this one and minimize that. Take this one, minimize that one. And I'll dock it up here. So there we go. We'll be working with this just like this. Now I'm in the photo bin. And one of the ways of bringing images into other projects or into other photos is to grab the image from the photo bin and just drag it straight in. So I'll do that this time. I'll grab the girl right here and just drag her straight in like that. Brings her in. Notice that she comes in here as a smart object layer, little icon right here. This is in later versions of Photoshop Elements. Earlier versions didn't do this. Let's go ahead and grab the owl down here and drag the owl in. There we go. Now, as I drag this in, notice that we don't see the images up here. That's a little glitch inside of Photoshop Elements. It sometimes happens, sometimes it doesn't. If I close and reopen this, we should get our thumbnails back again. They occasionally pop in and out. Don't worry about that. It's more critical as we get into working with the layer masks, so you can just see those. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll do that. We'll save this project. Notice right now it is the original name here. This is the background name. So go to File and Save. We should be in our same location. Here we are. And I'll make this as a different name this time. I'll call it Girl Flying Owl. And because we have layers, it's going to automatically save as a Photoshop file, PSD file format. That's correct. That saves our layers for us. Choose Save. I can now close this down. And we're done with this. And we're done with that one. Close those as well. Let's now reopen that one file and we should see our layers again. File Open Recent. Here we go. 
And there we go, we now have our thumbnails back again. So if you see your thumbnails disappearing over here, just close your file down, open it up again, and you should be just fine. They may come and go on occasion. I'll try to keep up as much as I can. Okay, so here's our images. And the first thing we'll work on is the owl. So let's just close the girl down right there, get her out of the way. And I just want to colorize this owl and flip the owl left to right so he's looking the other direction. So we'll do that flip first, go up here to image, rotate, and then come down here. And you want to flip the layer horizontal. That just reverses that position. I just use the control zero keyboard shortcut to make sure that this fits full screen in here. Get it as big of a picture as possible. Now, before we colorize this, let's hide that background layer. Click on that button right here, hides the background layer. That's because we don't want to colorize that. We just want to colorize this one layer right here. Okay, so now go up to Enhance, come down to Colorize Photo. Now this tool is designed for colorizing people. So there's a bit of a hard time here with the owl, but it still does a nice image. It looks much nicer in here having a bit of color. That's our first choice. Here's our second option. That's a bit brighter, I like that better. Here's our third option. And here we have a bit more naturalistic look. It's kind of a warmth down here and cooler up here. I think that's not too bad. Our next option here, more along the green lines in this one. But I think I'll go with the brightest yellow in here because we have a cool background with the blue and greens in that background landscape photo. So this will help this to stand out from that. So I choose this one, come down to OK. Here we go. Now notice what it did. It actually gave me two layers up here. The background layer is our black and white. And above that, we have this new yellow layer. I think I might want to have the eyes a bit more bluish in here. Let's have a way of doing that as well. We'll do another little trick on this one. But first, let's remove this background. Now we'll be making one layer mask for one layer here, this layer, and then duplicating that layer mask onto the layer underneath because we'll be using actually both of these layers for our owl picture. And let's zoom in over here, left-hand side. That's okay, just a little bit of a zoom, doesn't need much. And I'll be using the Standard lasso tool here, except for a new selection and one pixel. And I'll start over here just above the wing on the left hand side. And then make a selection just outside, as you can see here. I'm staying just a little ways away. You don't have to be exact or precise on this, just stay a little ways away. Come off the screen again, come outside a little ways, and up and around, and then back over your starting position like this, kind of cross over like that. And there's our basic selection. Now I come down here to Refine Edge. And I normally use the overlay mode here. You can really see where that edge is this way. But you can use anything you want. The Marching Ants is fine. On Black is okay. Whatever you like. I just happen to like using the overlay. That's my personal preference in here. We have all these things alone. We don't need this stuff for this particular project. And then hold the space bar down again to move your image. And this is at a size of 35, which looks about right. I normally look for my open space in here and then use a brush size that's about twice as big as that open space. And that's what we've got. And then just come in here and brush along that edge. And then Photoshop Elements goes in and re-examines that edge and does a much tighter selection on there. What it does is it looks for differences in color, differences in contrast, differences in focus, and uses that to find the actual edge. Again, spacebar there to move the picture and let's go clear around the edge okay just finishing up just a couple of strokes right down here there we go and now come over here to the refine edge toolbox come down to the tool right below here this is the erase tool and this takes away that refinement edge you can see it's the same size brush it has a minus sign in it now see a little bit of red right here just click on that that takes that out with the space bar down we'll look at our edges it's a little thin right up here. So just come back and just brush right along that edge. And then Photoshop Elements restores that and takes that out of the selection. And look at our bottom section. And that's good. Okay. Let's now output this. Come down to Selection. I want to output this as a layer mask. There we are. And it's going to put a layer mask on the currently selected layer, which is correct. Choose OK. There we go. And here's our bird with that background. If I hide this and bring in the background here, you can see how it's kind of sitting here on top. It looks really nice. Now we're going to be using both of these layers. I need to have this layer mask also down on this layer. So choose a layer mask. Look for that light blue outline. Hold the Alt key down, drag straight down. That copies the layer mask down to here. Now the reason for that is I want to show this layer through this layer up here. What I want to do is to have some coloration in the eyes. So for that, let's zoom in a bit on this, just in the eye area. Here we go. 
And this time I'll change my tool over here to the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll make a lasso just around here. I don't really care about this dark section, just the inside section, but I'm gonna follow that outside section here anyway. And let's set our feathering here to one pixel. Again, a little bit of a softening on that edge. And we'll do a fast little selection right around here. Just around that black area of the eye. And then up around here. Now with this tool, don't click too fast or the selection will collapse on you. You have to start over again. So just take your time with this back to the beginning. Now come down here and click on add. And then over here, right hand side, let's do the right hand side. I'll start right here. And we'll make a selection right around this eye. What I'll be doing here is putting in some blue coloration into the eyes, just to give them a difference so they'll stand out from the rest of the owl. Okay, I'm just kind of following along right where that should be. And back to the beginning point, there we go. Now we have this on our layer mask up here, and I just want to cut holes through this layer mask. Now black hides, white shows, I want to hide this part of the layer mask. So I'll go over here to the paintbrush, use the paintbrush size, and we're on black, that's fine. So if I just paint it here like this, this is going to hide that bit on that top layer mask, and we're seeing the bird layer underneath. There we go. And then Control D to deselect. So we now have the underneath layer is controlling the eye color. And I'll use Control Zero to get back to fifth screen. It's already better. But I want more of kind of a bluish color in here. You can go for a greenish color if you like, but I think bluish is to help things kind of stand out. I'll be on this black and white layer. And for that, let's go up here to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and you want Photo Filter. Where it says Use Previous Layer, check that. Choose OK. We want a Cooling Filter. That's one kind of a blue, it's a different blue. Here's another blue. I kind of like this blue here, the Cooling Filter 82. Nice blue eyes. And you can increase that just a little bit here, maybe up to about 32%. It, of course, is a fantasy picture, so it can be a bit more colorful than real life. That's fine. There's without and there's with, and I think that looks good. And close that down. So our owl is finished except for right up in here. So we can come back in and clean up our layer mask easily enough. Let's see where that is. Is that on the, okay, that's on both of our layers in here. So I'm going to go up to our top layer here and layer mask side. We want to tighten up our layer mask now. So let's zoom in. And there are a few things that you can do in here. Of course, black hides, white shows. I can just paint this out. Take our black paintbrush here. We're on the layer mask and I can then just paint in here and just take that out just like that. And that's probably all we need to do here. Just real fast and get this bit taken out of here. Okay, now let's increase the contrast of that edge. Give us a sharper edge. We're still on that layer mask. So go over here, left-hand side, and you want this tool here. This is the burn tool. Now this may look like that. Just come down here to the options and choose the burn tool. I have a set for shadows. Exposure is about 50% like this. And then it's come in and paint right over that edge. And what this does is it makes that edge more contrasty. And that gets rid of that last little bit of highlighting that you may get on the edge, a little bit of kind of a lightness showing. We can see that better if I bring back in the background, just a little bit of lightness showing in there. Okay, that's all taken care of. Now control zero to fit screen again. Now we need to have this cleaned up layer mask down below here. So for that, go up here to the top layer, layer mask side, hold the Alt key down, pull straight down onto this layer, choose your place layer mask, choose OK. So this now has the cleaned up layer mask, but we have these eyes showing in here. Now black hides, white shows. You can see on the layer mask over here, we have those little black dots in there. And then coming out of this layer mask, and we'll reset our colors here to white. And if we paint in here with white, it's going to then show that part of that lower layer. Make sure our layer is showing. There we go, that's correct. And let's switch over to our paintbrush tool. There we go. And I'm gonna bring my brush size up a bit. It's kind of small. That's pretty good. You can see there's a brush size right here. And then just paint in here like that. And there we go. We now have our eyes back in again, just filling in that part of that lower layer mask. Okay, last little thing in here is that the image is too high. We, we're kind of cutting off right down here. At this point, see there's the image edge. So grab your top layer. Hold the shift key down, grab the lower layer. They're now all selected. I can now just pull this straight down and get him right down there where he belongs, which is right in that corner right there. And that's perfect. Okay, the owl is now finished. We can now work on the girl layer. So for that, I'm just going to hide all of these layers temporarily. There we go. And we'll bring the girl layer up here. 
Now we use the exact same technique to create a layer mask for the girl here that we did for the owl. But first, I noticed some blemishes right down here on her leg. I think she ran into something. So let's fix this first, get this out of the way. I'll ignore that shadow, that's fine. But I care about this and this and a couple things over here. So we'll go over here to the spot healing tool. Now notice that we still had this as a smart layer when we brought this in. So choose OK, then converts that to a regular layer, that's fine. We can then just remove a couple of these blemishes in here. Not a big deal, but might as well. OK, that's good. Let's now go up here. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool for this. Make sure we're on the new selection and one pixel feathering. Hold the space bar down to move the image. I'm using the polygonal tool instead of the regular lasso tool just because there's so many ins and outs on this image. I don't want to have to be holding down the mouse button the whole time for that. This just makes that a bit easier. OK, same idea though. I want it to stay just away from the image, just outside, just a little bit like this. And we'll come around in here. When you use this tool, don't click too quickly or it may collapse your selection. You have to start over again. So let's take your time and work around the whole image. OK, back to our starting point. Double click and there we are. And of course, space bar to move. Now come down to the refine edge and I still have this on that pink overlay here. There is kind of like the overlay. And this time, because I'm sure we'll be having some problems around those arms and a few things like that, I'm going to bring my contrast up. Let's see about a quarter of the way, 25%. We'll bring Smart Radius up just one pixel in here. Those two things may help us a bit. I want to bring my brush size down. Now, normally I like having the brush size about twice as much as my, or twice as large as the space I'm filling in. And this is too big as you can see right down here. That's a pretty small space right there. So bring my size down to maybe an eight is a lot closer. That's better. We'll go ahead and we'll use it eight on this one. And we'll start on the hair and the right side, the left side of our picture. And then just like on the L, little short movements like this, and then let Elmas go in and re-examine that edge and do a tighter edge for us. And we'll get back up around the top, of course, and the edge of the hat here. And the hat should be just fine. I don't see any problems with the hat. Nice, bright, white, big change from the background. So this is gonna be a perfect edge up in here. So we're really having problems with those shadow areas where the shadow is getting similar in value to the background. OK, you can kind of see it right down, just a little bit of redness showing in here. I'll grab the Zoom tool and this zoom in on that. And it's just a little bit right in here. Now for this, go over here to this tool like we did before on the L. Okay, I'm going to bring my brush size up a bit, maybe 12. I like a little larger size when I'm using this tool. It's a little easier to hold a smooth edge this way. OK, and just paint right along that edge. Now this time it's not going to be going in and re-examining the edge. We're actually just painting the edge back in again and taking out that refined edge work in there. So you need to be more careful if you're doing this. Okay, I take care of that step. Now I want to bring this out to a layer mask. Come down to output and change to layer mask. Choose OK. And there's our layer mask. We now examine our edge. We have the background showing right here. Because it's a little bit messy in here and it's a bit dark along here. Some of the edges are a bit dark in there. Go over here to the paintbrush, and I want to have black in the foreground and a real small size back to my eight pixel for this particular picture. And then just paint in and come in against that edge and just paint out the rest of that little bit of darkness that's showing in here. And we're just cutting it along that edge and just cleaning that up. This is the kind of thing that I would spend a lot of time on to get this exactly right. Okay, it's been about 10 more minutes refining the girl's image, and I think that all looks good. The layer mask looks real nice now, nice and clean. Let's now get her positioned properly. So let's bring back in the owl pictures. There we are. Now notice our control handles up here. There they are. There's one over here, one over here. If you don't see those, use the keyboard shortcut control plus T to bring up our transformation handles, our control handles. And then grab a corner. We've got kind of a diagonal arrow right here. And pull that corner in like that. You can then resize the picture and position it. I want her about here at the top, about that much space at the top. And I want to be able to see just above the ankles. I want her ankles just down below. So right about in here. And I'll we'll position her just over this one ear. Kind of jump right there. Let's get that again. There we go. And OK, so that's the position. Now she's a little bit too bright, too contrasty for this. So let's adjust her value. So I first want to bring her coloration in closer to the owl's coloration. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, Photo Filter. Click that checkbox, use Previous Layer, choose OK. That's the warming filter. And I'll bring it up just a little bit, maybe about 30. And that's pretty good. That's closer in value. I like that, closer in color value. 
Now she's still a bit too contrasty. Her brights are too bright in here. The L is not quite as bright. It's pretty bright in here, but overall it's not quite as bright as that. So I need to tone her down a little bit. So make sure we're still on that same layer. Go up to layer, come down to adjust layer right here, new adjustment layer and levels. And again, that's still checked. Normally on this control, I'll be using this top control here to increase my contrast. In this case, I want to actually decrease the contrast on the light side. And that's the bottom control where it says output levels and the white over here. Pull this white back in a little bit and it's going to tone down the whites. I think about 245 looks pretty good. I'll just show and hide that here's with and there's with that. So see, I've, I've toned down the whites in there quite a bit and that helps to bring her values closer into the values of the owl, which makes it look more realistic. I'm gonna bring back in just a little bit of the darks up here. And I think right there looks real nice. It's fairly small adjustments on those, on the darks and on the whites to bring the values in closer to that owl underneath. Okay, that's all looking really nice. We need to work on that background a bit. It's a bit too contrast. It's too much in focus, takes away from our foreground. I wanna have the separation better in here. So come down to our background layer. I'm gonna right click on this layer and duplicate that layer, choose okay. And we're gonna be blurring out this top layer. I'm gonna blur it too far and we'll bring it back just a little bit with the opacity. I'll show you how that's done. Go up to filter, come down to blur and Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna set this up here. Right here is beginning to get just a bit too blurry. It's about 5.8, maybe six on this. That's more blurry than I want. But now because I have the unblurred layer underneath, if I bring down my opacity, it's gonna blend those two together. And you can see here I can kind of control the amount of blur now by controlling that opacity. And I think right about in here looks pretty good, about 50% maybe on the opacity. And I think that is just about right. And then finally, I want to make the background a bit more blue than our foreground. Just a touch, not much. So do another photo filter in here. Layer, come down to adjustment layer and photo filter. This time, don't check that checkbox, choose okay. So this is actually being applied to both those background layers. And I wanna have this at a cooling filter. We'll try the 82 and I'll back that off just a little bit in here, just a touch. See how that is just a little bit more, maybe about 5%. There it goes, just a little bit cooler in our foreground. And that helps you separate the foreground out from the background. Very subtle effect again. At this point, you want to save this again. And that's just file and save. It'll save onto the same location. Choose save and choose yes, or that's set. And that saves all of our layers over here if we want to go back and readjust this in the future. And if you need this for use on the web, you want either a JPEG or a PNG file. So for that, go up to File, come down to Save As, and then just change it right down here. We'll go to the PNG file format, choose Save, and OK. That's taken care of. And then if you want to print this out, that of course is the File menu and Print right here. And I have my file print size here set for 8x10, and I have Crop to Fit unchecked. There's Crop to Fit With. It kind of cuts off the edges, so uncheck that. And that looks good. Hit Print. This will then send that to your printer. Okay, if you have fun with this project, consider sending me a thanks. There's the thanks button is right down below the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Easy to spot. Also check out my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements projects. And don't forget to check out my complete training for Photoshop Elements, where I teach you how to do everything in Elements, all the tools, all the panels, all the menus, everything, including the organizer, which I don't normally talk about here on my YouTube channel. And you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.